Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. Today we're gonna to be talking about makeup and money again. And the point of this video is to really take a look at makeup prices and the other things that you could buy for the same price as a palette or another makeup item. And I'm tackling this idea with like me at the helm. I'm being kind of open in this in a way that I didn't expect was going to feel vulnerable, but is. For whatever reason, this feels like a very vulnerable video to me, uh, uh, talking about how I think of money and makeup and where I decide to spend my money when it comes to makeup, as opposed to not buying other things and how I rationalize buying some of this makeup even though I have hordes of it, but then don't buy other products. And I don't know if you guys are the same, but um, that's definitely how I am. Like a lot of my extra money, most of my extra money that I have to spend goes to makeup first, automatically, without really thinking about it, that's where it goes. And that's part of the reason I'm really excited for the budget next year, because I think it will, it'll give me a cap and I think it will be a better way to actually structure my finances. Just in general, I'm doing that and that's going to help. But I have a few points I wanted to just talk about at the very beginning. I thought about making this a little bit of like a tube talk, but I think I'm just going to put this all in the one video. Actually, I just decided right now, I'll talk about these points after I go through the fun part of the video and we'll have like a little food for thought afterward. I think that will make the most sense actually. <laughs> Just kidding. So let's get into the items of makeup that I maybe wanted. Like a lot of these are things I specifically want or I'm kind of interested in. And I'm not even saying I won't ever buy those things, but this exercise honestly did help put into perspective how normal it is for me to spend $20 on a palette, $50 on a palette, $67 on a palette. But then when I wanna buy other items, like the ones I'm going to mention, I'm almost more hesitant to spend the money even though those items are not consumable are going to be experiences or things that are going to hold their value and last throughout my life like I could have that thing for like ever for some reason I still choose the 800th palette so anyway the first thing that's on my list you guys know the hourglass ambient lighting blush palette this retails for I believe $58 I think it's really beautiful it's definitely something that's been tempting me. I'm pretty sure I've had it on my list long enough now. I'm being very realistic. I don't think I'm actually gonna buy it. I don't think I actually will end up buying this product, but this is something I actually did already buy. Sam and I are gonna go see Rex Orange County in January. I'm so freaking excited. And I think the show we're going to is sold out and I can't remember the exact prices we paid, but I looked up online and the tickets for Rex Orange County uh, for a different day in LA are $57, so technically a dollar cheaper. I feel like concerts and experiences like that, I'm, I've been a lot better this year, but there are so many shows like I wish I could go to, like I wanted to see Anastasia, but like the live performance, and there are so many things like that, that if I had put the money aside, not bought X makeup palette, not bought whatever, I would be able to buy that ticket so much easier. And like this is a like literally a perfect cost example um, where I could have like this hourglass blush palette that's really pretty and has four blushes and those blushes will last a long time. Like I couldn't use those blushes up very fast, but it will go bad eventually. Or I could have this awesome experience of going to a concert, having a great night with someone else. That's going to last forever. Like that memory will last forever. And with the tickets, you actually got the CD as well. So you even got like an actual like physical item too. So that's what we're getting into. Like if you didn't know where this video is going, this is where it's going. <laughs> this is where it's going and that's why, like you'll see why it gets a little bit more personal for me. The next item on my list, you guys have heard me talk about this quite a bit. I really wanna try the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Some people use it as a foundation, some people say it's only a highlighter. A lot of people have recommended the Milani dupe, but regardless, I still want the, to try this product. I still wanna try this brand. I think this product would work really well for me. And it retails for $44, which is quite expensive. And so instead of this item, instead of buying another makeup item in my collection, I actually have bought this thing already because Sam and I had to upgrade our phones. It was like either buy the eights we have or upgrade, so we upgraded. And so I needed a case to go with it because obviously the one that I have isn't gonna fit the new phone because that's what they love to do. I sound like I'm not excited, but I am. Like I'm excited for the new phone, but I'm also at the same time, I just am not someone who likes to change and it has no home button in it. Like it's just gonna be a whole new process of like learning and I, I'm intimidated by it and I also am like, I don't have the time for this. Anyway, I am excited, but I really wanted to find a case that was going to to work and usually what I do is I scour the internet for like the cheapest cutest case like it needs to be cute but it also needs to be the cheapest and instead <laughs> this time I actually just was trying to find something that I really thought would work well for me so I went with a case from 
case to fi. I don't know how to freaking say it, but I actually ended up buying a case that has these Jaguars on it. It's really, really cute, and it cost me $40, which is really expensive. Again, I'm someone who buys like the $10 case on Amazon, <laughs> and I'm really excited to get that case in the mail to have something that I feel like is a treat to my phone, something that is going to be on my phone. Like, I'm not someone who switches up my cases, so I know it's going to like be on there and be something that I use for the basically <laughs> life of my phone, and I think that's a really good value, and it's something that that I would so much more easily, once again, buy the Charlotte Tilbury Foundation or Flawless Filter, whatever that is, primer, luminizer thing, <laughs> I would buy that with so much more ease. I would click that button so much more easily um, than I would buying this case, even though this case is a much more practical purchase for me. I literally do not have another iPhone case to use. <laughs> I don't have another iPhone case that will fit that phone. And it's also like the one that really works for me and I know I'm not going to be switching it out or buying a bunch of other ones. So it's like a one-time thing. Whereas one of the issues that I've noticed with the buying is if I was buying the one Charlotte Tilbury foundation, if I was buying the one eyeshadow palette and I was gonna use that for three years and then buy one more after that, that wouldn't be as big of an issue, right? But that's not what I do and that's not what a lot of us do. We buy like a bunch of palettes and <laughs> we continue to buy palette after palette after palette, multiple palettes a month. And so that's when I feel like it, it becomes less useful. and you know, makeup collections and how you use makeup, it's, it all differs for sure. But with my personal finances, I'm like, why am I spending every ounce of my free money on makeup when I could be spending it on other things, other things that are gonna bring joy to my life, other things that are gonna mean a lot to me too. Anyway, <laughs> getting deep, I told you, next one, <laughs> next one. Next on my list, I had the Huda Mercury Retrograde Palette. I really wanted this palette, you guys know that. I did end up duping this out in my collection and kind of that FOMO's gone. That palette had a short short life for me, I don't know why. I, I wanted it so intensely, so intensely, and then once I duped it out uh, and I used some of my Cleona shadows, which have literally been amazing. And I feel like they're really going to be the thing that stops me from buying a lot of stuff next year because like nothing can beat them. And I have like everyone I could ever want. But after making that Huda palette, that kind of like stopped the itch a lot. Um, the reviews weren't amazing. They were kind of like iffy, iffy. That stopped it. And also I just never saw it again. It was like after I got through that first like week, two weeks, where is it? Who's using it? It's just one of those palettes that really did get lost. Like it, it really got lost in the shuffle of things. And so that retails for $67. But instead of buying that, instead, right, I could put my resources toward something that I've really been wanting in my life, which is a coffee maker. Um, um, I didn't want to get like a plastic plug-in one. I don't make coffee a ton. I really like iced coffee. That's my favorite way. So on my list is the Chemex Filter Drip Coffee Maker. I promise I'm, I don't want this because of Robbie and Christy. That's not why. <laughs> That's not why I want this one. No, it totally is. I saw her have something like this. <laughs> and so that's what made me like Google search trying to find something similar. I really liked the idea of it. And so the one that I want retails for about $50. And then I would either need to buy the filters, which I might do, or you can buy like an actual like reusable filter. Um, so I feel like with all the accessories and everything, it would be about the same price as the Huda palette. And again, this glass coffee drip maker one is gonna be like a fun thing, uh, an added routine to my morning that I could use any morning I choose, no matter what makeup I decide to put on, because it's not an, a competing makeup item. But it's also something I'm I'm filling a hole in my life. Like I, I've been wanting something like this, I need something like this, and instead of buying more freaking makeup that I already have, I could actually like fill my life with something that I need. And I feel like on this list, I didn't just put utilitarian things like the most basic, basic things, like the most basic case on Amazon. Instead I picked the more fun phone case. I picked the actual coffee maker I would want. Not just the one that I would be like, well, I guess it's the cheapest, let's just get that one. I picked the one I'd want because that's what I do with makeup. With makeup, I will let myself buy like the one I want, you know? And I don't let myself do that with other things and I like wanna just have more balance with that. And so if you notice some of these items, maybe to you are a little bougie, um, that was part of the exercise for me is like, what is the thing I'd actually want? If kind of price wasn't an issue, because that's what scares me away from a lot of these non-makeup items. I'm like, that's too much money for that type of item. But literally, I never say that. About, well, I do say it about makeup, but then I'm like, if I really wanted, I buy it anyway. All right, moving on. <laughs> We're only three down the list, holy camoly. Next on my list is something from Kosa, and this is the Wet Lip Oil Gloss. These look stunning. I really wanna try them. I love the promo pics for them. I love a lip gloss, I love a lip oil. The colors look really nice. I kind of like just Kosa's entire like aesthetic 
and, and branding. So I definitely want to try this out and it's a $25 lip gloss. And this one is a little bit more utilitarian, but Sam and I have been needing this for a long time. It's another kind of phone accessory, but we don't have anything in our car that like mounts our phone up. We did for a while, but it broke. And then we had something that we got so cheap at like Ross that just sucked. You're like supposed to put it on like air conditioning thing. Doesn't work, doesn't hold up the phone. It just kind of like, <laughs> just like faces down. Like, how's that gonna help me? So I put on here that buying a car mount that we actually did a little research in that had really good reviews would be about the same price as this lip gloss. And we all know me with lip products, right? There are some products I love. Like I love some lip products, but I, I tend to use and rotate through the same couple of lip products even then never really going through any of them. And so this one is like, I'll buy a lip gloss so that I can just have it and try it for a little bit and then move on with my life and use the other 10 million that I have. Or instead I could buy like something we actually <laughs> actually need and buy like the good one instead of the crappy Ross one because I actually saved some money aside and bought it instead of buying a lip gloss that I don't need. Oh no, this the next one's like the personal one. And don't you judge me, okay? We're all here, it's a safe space. Anyway, this is the Rowan eyeshadow palette. Uh, I, I really want these. Hannah talks about these all the time. She has, I think, the warm one and then she has like the summer disco little eye one as well. I swatched them at her house and I think they're beautiful. I definitely have them on my list next year at some point to buy, but they retail for $42 for a quad of like cream shadows. It's a lot of money. Definitely something I would think twice about, but it's still on my list. And even me like sitting here telling you now, I'm like, I'm probably gonna buy that but something that's actually really useful for me and something that I need to replace in my life are bras <laughs> I need to buy, I need some bras and this one's like really where like again yeah that personal part I'm like what is my problem and I'm sure there are a lot of issues if I'm being real like there are a lot of issues of like makeup always fits and I'm a plus-size woman so it's always easier for me to buy makeup than it is to buy fashion items it just always has been I'm trying to change that a little bit. Like you'll see, I have like a whole plan for next year and, and everything going on with this channel. It's gonna be beauty, but I'm also gonna add in some other things. But this is one where it really got, it got real with me. Like this is a bra. Obviously like I'm wearing a bra, like these are functional, right? But like having something that I feel really great in that isn't super old, that isn't like, you know, kind of like, oh, I should replace that. It is so tough for me to like sit down and actually do that, which there's a lot more mental stuff involved in that. But also I can always be like, oh, I don't have enough money, but then and I can find $40 to go buy a makeup item. I can go find that though. So I'm really like with those types of things, especially I'm trying to really just watch my behaviors. And again, I'm really excited for that budgeting aspect because I think it will help me to be better about knowing where my money's going and not letting myself skimp out on some of the other things I need. And I put on here that a bra costs about $40 cause I get mine at Lane Bryant. If you need to know where to get a good bra, that's where I suggest. You're welcome. Next, let's talk about the Melt Amour Eterno Illumination Highlighter. This thing is beautiful, tempting as hell, but this thing is very expensive. It's $39. The embossing, the whole vision, just being a part of that vision, right, by buying a makeup item is enticing. But instead of buying that, I could buy something like a planner for 2020. I was looking on anthropology a lot. I've been like so into anthropology. It's like my bougie dreams, <laughs> and it's like boho and everything I want. And there are a lot of planners on there that are like 35 or less, they're in that range. And I know if I wasn't doing this project, I'd be like $35 for a planner. Yeah, right. $20 and under only. Like I would put that in my mind, but I would sit there and maybe try to figure out a way to rationalize this highlighter that I'm already like, will it work for my skin tone? Not really sure, but I want to be a part of it. I want to buy it. It looks so pretty. It'll be okay. It'll be okay if I buy that thing. Whereas like buying a planner would actually be like helpful for my whole year, right? Like $35 to invest in a product that's going to help me plan out and hopefully be successful throughout the next whole year. That seems like a lot more worth it than a highlighter that's going to sit in my drawer and never get used. And then I'm going to pull out and stare at and then not be able to declutter later, you know? <laughs> That's where I'm at guys. That's where I'm at in this video. I might be calling you out, but I'm calling me out more. Trust me. <laughs> okay, next on my list, this is from Natasha Denona and it's the mini bronze and glow. Uh, it's a duo. It has a bronzer and a highlighter. I want this thing. I just heard Samantha March like especially rave about it. And I've wanted to try the Natasha Denona highlighters for a really long time. I want to try the little bronzer and this is more reasonable for Natasha Denona. I mean, it's a pretty small product, but it's only $19 and we know with Natasha Denona, the sky's the limit on pricing. <laughs> but instead, I put on here, which might seem like the most extra other thing. You're like, that's the thing you're gonna buy instead. But I put on here some rose gold scissors. <laughs> and I know that this might seem super bougie, 
but I know that these scissors would bring me so much joy. It's one of those purchases that you see and you like kind of scoff at at the store. You're like, who would buy those? But like deep down, you kind of want to be the person that has the rose gold scissors. And what I love about this item on my list and what it represents is the fact that these scissors would be with me for forever, right? Unless like they got lost or someone stole them. Like these scissors are like essentially indestructible. They're not going to expire. I'm going to have them forever. And in five years when I'm making an aesthetic picture or I'm just cutting something, I just... I, I know I'll love them. I'll be so happy to have them. I have so many items like that that were so extra and weird. Maybe I got them randomly as a gift from someone and it seemed like a weird thing at the time, but it's something I would have never bought myself. That is like the equivalent of a makeup item, like that one makeup item you love and you just are so happy you have in another aspect of my life that isn't makeup. <laughs> That's what those rose gold scissors would be for me. And those retail for $16, so they're not even the full 19. The real big thing for me with a lot of these is that those scissors just hold their value in a way that makeup doesn't. And so many of these items hold their value, whether it's because they're useful for basically ever, or you can maybe even resell them. Like, and makeup just really doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. Okay, moving on. Next, I have a very expensive one. I really wanted to make a point with this one. So this is the Viseart Grand Pro 3. When this product came out, I was definitely tempted. It was one of those things that I knew would be a planned purchase. Like this would be a very uh, thought out purchase because it's $175 for this palette. It's a lot of money. It really is a lot of money, but it's something that I like considered. I entertained the thought of this, right? But $175 is insane amounts of money to spend on makeup if you aren't like equally wealthy everywhere else. And that's not where I, I'm not. I'm not equally wealthy where $175 on an extra palette that I've already have a million of makes sense in my life. Like I'm definitely not there. Instead, what I should be buying are dining chairs for my dining table. <laughs> I have this really big wood table that Sam actually got secondhand from his work. It's really, I really enjoy the table. It's huge. It's a very nice, sturdy table. It's our earthquake table. <laughs> and I have a couple of chairs. I have like the chair I'm sitting on, which I initially bought when we first moved to LA uh, to go on a patio. So it's like a rickety wood patio chair from Ikea. This has been one of our dining room chairs for the last five years. <laughs> I've never bought anything else and it's never really sat on a patio. I also have a couple chairs I got at the thrift store that I love. Like they're like lime green chartreuse velvet material on the bottom, but the tops, and I got them for so cheap, they were like 250 a piece. But the tops have broken off, both of them. Um, I blame Liam, but also they are just, they were ready to go anyway. And other than that, we have like a cooler. Again, vulnerable guys, I'm being very vulnerable with you. I live with two dudes, okay? I live with my husband and my roommate, and so it's kind of bachelory in the fun way though, in the fun way. And I'd like for some of it to be a little bit more of a home, but I also am at the point where I want items that are gonna be with me a long time, so I don't wanna just hastily buy some more of these like Ikea patio chairs. I want something that's going to be an item I'm really gonna love and use. So anyway, I was scrolling through Anthropology to see if I could find anything that was reasonably $175. Now this is for one chair, but I did find some that I thought would be so pretty that I could like mix and match. And, um, and they're $108 a piece. And the fact that it would take so much for me to actually sit down and buy a chair, which is so stupid. Like I know I, <laughs> I need one, hello. I know I need a chair, but it's so much more fun and easy to think about buying a $175 palette instead of a couple more chairs for my actual dining room table. Oh my gosh, you guys help. I'm so excited for next year and like the financial health that I'm going to be putting myself through. Next, let's talk about the Lunar Beauty uh, Moon Spell Palette. Another palette I really have been wanting. It's still kind of on my list. It's still really beautiful. Like it's definitely something I look fondly on. Like I'd love to get that in a boxy charm. Boxy charm, put it in a boxy charm. Come on. Anyway, something I put on here that I think would be so lovely to have, but I know that I would never probably just like outright buy this. Like again, it'd have to be a gift or almost like a boxy charm situation where it was in one of those lifestyle boxes or something. But I put on here an agate cutting board, like one of those really beautiful like rock crystal cutting boards. We've done more entertaining lately. I know you can't believe it because I just told you I don't have any chairs, but we have. <laughs> we have a fun house though. So people get over that really fast and just have a good time. Anyway, I would love to have something like this that's again going to be in my collection. Like I can see myself entertaining in 20 years and having this item where I can put out a nice like cheese board or serve really anything kind of fancy like. Um, I recently this year, I actually bought some wine glasses 
glasses and champagne glasses that were coated in a really beautiful like iridescent film essentially super stunning I'm gonna link my anthropology like haul where I show it anyway <laughs> it'll be linked if you really want to see some clothing and items that I bought from there and they're beautiful and I love them and they bring so much joy to me I love that we use them on Thanksgiving uh, and it's just one of those things that obviously unless it breaks they'll they're gonna be in my life for a really long time and that's how this item is the one that I was looking at was $55 but I mean again you can these are some specific items I just wanted to have for the video but I'm not even saying I'm gonna buy this exact one I'm just saying something like this so we could have countless examples of this countless examples of items and things that I probably should be or that would bring a lot of value into my life even if they seem just as frivolous but aren't in the makeup category I think that for me for a while will be a better choice in a lot of ways. Next I have another Hourglass product on here. These are the Scattered Light Trio of like cream shadows. Retails for 48 for this set. It's a holiday set. It's like the thing I went back and forth on between the blush palette and these shadows, like which one would I want? And instead another dining room thing. I'm trying to like make my dining room nice. Like I want it to be cute and comforting and I want people to be able to like sit there and have conversation <laughs> instead of only having like the couches that we have. Anyway, Way, I would love to get a table runner. I have this huge big wooden table and to have like this really nice macrame uh, table runner or some type of like boho table runner would be beautiful. And I definitely could find something probably within that $48, $50 realm. That would be exactly what I wanted, exactly what I needed. But I know if I saw that price, I'd be like, mm, I don't know. I don't know, should I buy it, should I not? Should I buy it, should I not? And it's like, yeah, buy the damn table runner, girl. Don't get the cream eyeshadows that you're never gonna use, you're gonna have to force yourself to use after three months, that you're going to declutter eventually. Like, don't buy those. You have cream eyeshadows, use those, <laughs> and get the table runner that you literally don't have any of. Why is that a hard decision? And last on my list, I have the Atelier Pacific Lime Cologne. This retails for $28 for the roller ball. I love this cologne. Again, another one of those things that, like, these items that I want are on my list. I want these things. I didn't just put random beauty and makeup items on here that I couldn't give a shit about. Like those aren't the items on here. I put things that I want. Uh, because I think that makes it harder and that like really shows the point of it all. Anyway, retails for $28. I do want this. I probably at some point will buy this, but instead what would be really awesome are some metal measuring cups. I had measuring cups from Betty Crocker from the dollar store. When I first moved out of my house into my apartment, um, I bought those from the dollar store. I And we had those for forever. We had them for so long, six plus years, like those were our measuring cups. And recently I decided I'm going to upgrade them. All of the writing on them had kind of melted off. I don't know, I was getting like a little creeped out by it. So I was like, I'm gonna get some new ones. And when I was at Marshall's, I saw some really cute like teal ones with a metal handle. And then the actual like cup was plastic. Those things lasted, I don't even know, maybe three uses. And then most of them have broken by this time. Like literally the plastic just breaks off the handle and like the just the point of contact is so weak which was so disappointing because I had already gotten rid of the other measuring cups so now I'm like out of measuring cups and I've decided like I'm going to get metal ones <laughs> the next ones I get they're going to be metal they're going to be the ones that I'm gonna have for forever that my kids when I die are gonna be like what do we do with mom's measuring cups like that's those are the types of measuring cups that I want. So I've been looking around trying to find a nice set of metal ones. I'd really love some like cool handles, like maybe something that's like a carved design or I don't know, something kind of whimsical if I can find it. And I'd be willing to spend quite a bit of money on them because I know it's something that I'll never have to repurchase ever again. Those will be it, those will be the thing. I love the idea that they're just like indestructible and they will stay with me and it's a type of kitchen item you use so much. And so for it to have something special to it would be amazing, like something that would bring me I know so much joy and so much practical use. Anyway, some of the ones I was looking at were like in the $25 realm and I feel like usually I would look at that and be like, that's so expensive because hello, I spent like a dollar on my set before. <laughs> but I think that that purchase would be worth it to me and to hold off on the cologne for a little bit, right? Like. That makes sense. So anyway, that's my video guys. I really hope that for you, this might put some prices into perspective. I know it did for me and I knew doing it. Like I've had this idea on my list for a while and maybe I'll come back and we'll do another version of it. When you just need like a check-in, you know? Like I'm not saying to never buy makeup again. I'm not saying I'm never gonna buy makeup again. I just think that it's good to have conversations like this. <laughs> it's good to have conversations that aren't just normalizing these $67 price points these $60 palettes over and over again, buying multiple and multiple 
every single month and for some people that's that is something they can afford that is something that they have the budget for but I think for a lot of us it's not and so for me not only am I trying to just kind of limit my beauty purchases in general and that's not only to just save money but it's also I want to distribute how I spend my money differently as well I don't want all my free money to go to makeup I want to travel I want to have nice things in my house that last a long time I want to upgrade my furniture when the time actually is needed like I'm not trying to be excessive by any means but I do want to instead of buying the cheap thing everywhere else and then spending all my extra money on makeup I want to buy the quality thing in the areas that it counts <laughs> I want to buy the quality item that's going to actually withstand the test of time whereas the makeup isn't necessarily going to do that I've seen it I've seen it in my own declutters I've seen it even if I love something in a year that does tend to usually fade away and even if it doesn't within two more years after that that product is old enough for me to also consider is it safe to use still and with a lot of the other products that I was comparing the makeup to that is not the case with any of them three years cool five years still going great 20 years we still got it like that's the perspective I wanted to give you guys in this video so I'm not even trying to say that expensive makeup is bad that's not the point of this video either expensive makeup is expensive makeup what's what's bad to me is the excessive buying of, of makeup whether it's expensive or not if you already have a shit ton of makeup and I continue to buy shit tons of makeup like that's the thing I'm trying to curb anyway you guys know that that's part of what this channel is it's like about finding the balance of loving makeup because we all love the makeup y'all you know I love the makeup but also having like a fulfilling life in other areas and knowing that makeup is not everything and also trying to fight all the marketing and all the FOMO that's being thrown at you every single day every single day in this community so okay I'm ending it I know it was a long one thank you for being here guys I can't wait to read your guys's comments in the video I really hope you enjoyed it I really hope you did <laughs> okay thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video